guys, Looney here. Welcome to the end of the video for all of my project. In this video, we will be showing you how to implement our little system, well, our Java API to be specific, into your bucket slash big up plugin. Now, if you're looking for a bungee cord tutorial, it's basically like this one, but the way that you would uh, save things to a file, well, config file, and get it is a little bit different, and showing down specific plugins is also different. Uh, hence why we're actually going to make a separate video for that. Um, but in this video, we uh, we've basically made a resource on Spigot. Uh, this is to help out anyone that's actually on Spigot to realize that it's an actual thing and stuff like that. So that's basically that. Um, it's got a little introduction, how to get started. Uh, you can actually just uh, follow the steps on the getting started page itself. But uh, if you don't want to, you can obviously just follow these steps here. Um, got a little bit of information about our uh, well, what's upcoming and a little bit of email contact and then they will have a list of videos that I myself make or other people make uh, and stuff like that really so uh, in the current place of the video that I'm actually making now there's a little coming soon a, a documentation page so if you actually clicked on it or you just went to whatsmyproject.com itself you would notice well first off ads help um, if you're not logged in you won't actually see ads uh, it was putting people off which is perfectly fine so I remove it for people that aren't actually signed in uh, if you are signed in it, they will show every 15 minutes um, however you can edit the interval in your sentence uh, I thought I'd I know I made that um, clear in the first video that I've made but um, some people obviously don't watch those videos so that's perfectly fine I thought I'd explain this one too so please don't get put off by this uh, if you don't want a difficult ad block perfectly fine you don't have to you literally just click the X or click anywhere and it will obviously go. Um, so moving on, um, after an unnecessary detour. Um, this little notice up here is just to explain that it's just using the uh, Java API, but we're going to adapt the code a little bit um, to help us with implementing it into our bucket slash spigot plugin. So first off, you um, you're either going to be downloading it, implementing it into your library slash build path, or whatever your IDE um, has in that sort of sense. Or you would use Maven and get it from the repository of the dependency. Uh, I know there's another thing like Anna and Gradle. Uh, I think it's Anna, I don't know. Um, you'd have to adapt those because I don't use them, so I'm not really sure how, um, how you would adapt these sort of things for that. Um, so you'd put these into your pom.xml. Um, as I have done here, put the repository and I put the dependency. And then I went over to the, uh, well, I scrolled down here, copied most of this, um, got rid of the system out because I don't need them right now. Because uh, we're going to go ahead, ahead uh, we're going to go ahead and add our own. Uh, one thing that we do need though is um, just before the Gem Builder, if we do file configuration, config is equal to the get config, and then if we go over to the bucket slash spigot, if we copy these three lines and paste them there, uh, import bucket if yours isn't already imported. Um, so first off, where it says your auth key, just make it use the available auth key. Down here, where it says server IP, make it use the auth IP variable. And for the set JV import, use bucket.get port, which will get the port of the running server. Um, so that's that for now, uh, which is perfectly fine. Now obviously here you do something like um, config.add default auth key and then obviously it'd be nothing and then config.add default IP which is or uh, again be nothing um, and then obviously you'd save it blah 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 I'll just say save it <laughs> um, some people want to save it differently um, but for now I'm just going to do the very old basic uh, copy defaults without actually checking if the config already exists um, so that will be a temporary solution. Um, so on validate, um, if the status is, or if the status isn't a valid uh, valid key, we simply just want to use the logger.log, .log, uh, of which I've already gotten the instance of, same with instance. Um, and I can put it as level.severe, uh, with a status, obviously I need to get the status, status to string in a message which is response to get message and then because the plugin isn't actually going to be loading 
you can just get the plugin manager and disable the instance well disable our current plugin uh, but would use the instance of our actual uh, plugin class uh, hence why this variable is actually a thing so now I'm just going to copy this line of code uh, simply because it will help um, well it won't help it just means that I don't have to type it out again um, but for this allowed use uh, this is basically called whenever the key is ac accepted perfectly fine so basically whenever this on validate method returns true um, literally the only way it's called um, so if we use level dot fine and then we do auth key accepted and then your plugin will load its features and then here for example um, you would load your uh, load listeners API classes commands timers etc basically whatever you're gonna have here now for the overload which basically means no sorry this key is currently being used way too many times um, we simply go ahead and do logger dot log uh, level dot severe and then plugin has reached its maximum um, allowed concurrent uses that would make more sense no it's allowed concurrent uses yeah concurrent uses uh, uses and then if we did auth key dot get current counter auth key yeah auth key dot get uh, where's my there's my uh, and then that will just go ahead and print out the fact that it's going to be cancelled uh, the, the plugin will be uh, disabled um, these messages are different to what's actually on the Java page obviously um, yeah, it just seems to be a lot better uh, than these current ones in my opinion if you want to change it back you can obviously that's what you want to do as a developer it's down to you um, but that's basically it uh, I'm not going to show it actually working um, I already know it works um, apart from the fact that I need to actually scope compile this um, but yeah all that you do is inside the config.yml file you put in the auth key and then the IP um, now if the IP in the well in our case in the config.yml is empty or you know it's just no whatever um, it will use the bucket ID but however it's not going to allow any connections from a local IP so 127.0.0.192.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.